We're going to talk about some different types of components um, and how they work in the HFC network. Uh, the first component we're going to talk about is a tap. This is a two-port tap, okay? And when in the uh, cable TV industry, taps mean that's where your drop cable comes off of. That is connected then to your um, NIU, okay, or NID at your house. So this is in, these are going to be in pedestals if they're underground or up on hard line on poles, okay, if they're aerial. They can be both spots because they're both res uh, weather resistance either way. So this is a two-port tap, okay, because it has two outputs. What would happen is you'd have your hard line that would be an in, like so, and then it would be keep on going down the line to the next device, okay? But coming off of that, you're going to have an RG6 drop cable or usually an RG11 drop cable. Coming off uh, either in the pet, it'll be buried to your customer's house, or it'll be an aerial drop with a messenger cable to your uh, customer's house. That's just a two port, so that's all you have. And this is the DB level value that you need um, on that actual tap. As taps go on, the higher uh, value you'll have will be closer to the head end. That'll be less loss um, going down your actual network. This tap here is a four port tap. Once again, you have four outputs or four drop cables can come off and serve uh, four different customers in that neighborhood. Once again, you have an in and an out, and it, depending on how uh, you have this configured, uh, you can have them either way. Um, usually in underground peds, you have it coming in and then going down. So this is in a ped. Aerial, you're gonna have something similar to that. But let's say you have to go to a, um, a right angle, then you can come that way as well. So you have some flexibility in how these are, are designed um, for your network. The next tap I'm gonna talk about is a eight port tap. Now this has a reading on there, but it looks like it got wore off. But uh, here you have eight outputs. And once again, these are, all, are both made for uh, overhead insulation and underground insulation. This last device that I'm gonna talk about is the uh, is a two-way splitter okay so if you have a neighborhood where uh, you don't have any taps or any drops you will actually split this signal so that you can go different directions to cover your network this concludes the component videos okay, we're going to talk about cable characteristics of coaxial and ethernet cables and their standards um, we also are going to uh, talk about the different types of connectors and why they're used. Um, the first coax cable that I'm going to talk about uh, is an RG6. Okay, RG6U used for the underground. We have identification markings just like in the uh, twisted pair section. Uh, we also have it for coaxial markings. Uh, these markings are, for example, here's the manufacturer. Uh, it'll talk about footages, it's going to talk about the different types, um, and it'll also give you a 75 ohm characteristic, so that's the characteristic impedance of this cable, which you'll get into a little bit later in other modules. Also, it's going to tell you uh, the bandwidth capabilities. This is capable of 3 gigahertz uh, bandwidth transmission. Um, this cable is manufactured uh, for underground services, this is a drop cable, okay? And drop means it's going to go from uh, subscriber tap, all right, and then buried to the actual uh, network interface device that is connected to a ground block, which you'll see in a later video also. Some of the characteristics of this cable I want to identify. You have your black polyethylene coating. You have a metallic braid that gives the flexibility, okay? You also have a aluminum uh, sheath, which is your outer conductor, okay? And then inside here is called, the white part is your dielectric. Your dielectric is the insulation uh, between your center conductor, this copper center conductor, and your outer uh, metallic sheath. 
also on this end when you terminate this type of cable you put an F connector and that's what this connector is called your F connectors get, there's many different types um, we can go through here's a here's a crimp on type that will fit on this as well and then instead of using a com compression tool like this one you use a crimp tool compression tools look like this your cable goes in like so and then you compress it and that makes that connection with this so that this doesn't come off at all. This type of connector is called the crimp. So this could go on this end, okay, and then instead of the compression, you put it in here and you crimp it. And that would keep this on just like this connector as well. Those are two types of connectors for, for your drop cables. The next type of cable that I'm going to talk about is this is another type of drop cable but this is for aerial and how do I know that's because it has a messenger wire on there this is a copper wire or, uh, excuse me a steel wire that gives us additional support so an aerial transmission what happens is or, or a drop insulation this gets tied onto the house and this gets tied onto the pole okay so with bad weather wind storm snow whatever it might be, it's going to give you that support, this rigid strength for that type of aerial drop. Same type of uh, um, internal components, you're going to have your polyethylene, your, your braided shield to give it flexibility, your dielectric, and your center conductor. The next type of cable is, this is a cable that we use for uh, video surveillance. Once again, this is RG6, or excuse me, RG59, this one is. So the difference between 59 and 6 is that your center conductor is, I don't want to show this one, is a little bit smaller. You can see that. And your dielectric is a little bit smaller. So when you have a smaller type of cable, RG59, uh, um, then you have to use different types of connectors because your center conductor won't fit on one or the other so you have to use the correct uh, connector for termination now for this type of uh, cable itself I said it was for surveillance so the video signal from the camera is ran through here but the camera needs power so that power is, is uh, connected through this red and black okay and usually all cameras are run off a 24 or 12 volt DC uh, power supplies most often 12 volt and that's what these are okay this is going to power up the camera it's going to go back to a power supply and be terminated and once again everything else is uniform and you can get this in black or white and maybe other colors as well um, the next cable I'm going to show here is this is another type of uh, RG59 and once again if you take a look at the end face you can tell because of the center conductor is smaller the dielectric is smaller as well but this is most awfully used um, in satellite installation so in satellite installation you'll have this type of cable because you will have uh, uh, satellites that will have dual L and B and the L and B is a little device that actually syncs up with the actual satellite. So you'll have a couple different satellites that your um, service will connect to, and that's why we run a dual coax. Also, we have, this is a bigger one, if you compare it to some of these other size of cables, it's much larger. And this is an RG11 um, drop cable. It's a lot bigger. The center conductor is a lot thicker, um, the dielectric is a lot thicker, and then you have your outer conductor right here. This is used for drops, but in circumstances that um, there's a long distance drop, you use this because there will be less attenuation in that signal. Um, once again, you're going to have markings just like all the other cables that show the manufacturer, all the specifications usually some footage markings so that they can be documented. These are our types of drop cables. 
I want to show one more type of cable and this is a uh, slip-on F connector cable you can see it's really thin and this is going to be used in between di devices like set-top boxes and TVs one other thing that I forgot about the RG11 cable is the size of F connector here that's this F connector and it has a weather boot on there once again this is going to be underground there is a flooding compound in here to keep any type of water out so this will be a compression it'll be crimped on here and be terminated one last type of connectors is our, 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 our uh, coaxial connectors are our hard line and this is hard line this is going to be an aerial type of hard line okay I will show you a video a little bit later on the different types of devices that are connected to the hard line um, in the aerial transmission. But once again, you have your outer conductor, that's what this is. You have your dielectric, okay, and then you have your center conductor. This type of cable is used for your feeder distribution cable. So coming from the head end and going to all the components, that's where this is going to take place. Why? Because this is going to go a lot longer distances because there's going to be less resistance and less attenuation because of the size of this cable. And that's where this comes into play for feeder distribution. These will be connected to components and devices which then will have these drop cables connected to going to the customer or business. This last cable here is underground, another hard line, okay? This one's got a polyethylene jacket on it. Here's your outer conductor, your dielectrics in there, which wraps around your center conductor, keeping it insulated from this, because if they touch, that's a direct short, and you will not get signal, and you will have uh, no reception, and this will actually interfere with the whole system's transmission. These connectors on this type of cable uh, are a hard line connectors they have a device that your center conductor goes in here and it gets compressed on so you have a tight fit they can use these in different type of uh, this is like actually a splice connector as you can see the hard line goes in here so you can come so if you run out of cable or if the cable gets broke that's where a splice comes into play but more often these connectors are connected Two devices this is a line extender it goes into here it gets connected and then this line extender will actually boost the signal for the distribution Splitters and taps come in many variations and they even look the same but what's the difference the main difference is that a splitter distributes the incoming signal out to each output port and it does so evenly, while a tap will apply different amounts of loss to each output port individually so that when one cable is shorter than another, the output will still be the same. Let's look at splitters first. Splitters are designed to be used in signal distribution systems to split the amplified signal with minimum signal loss. Equal amounts of signal are sent to multiple antennas for areas of similar size. When using a splitter, you want the various cable lengths coming out of the splitter to be more or less the same. You don't want one run to be much shorter than the others, or one to be extremely long. Let me quickly illustrate how signal works when traveling through a cable. As signal passes through the cable, it loses strength the longer it travels. When it comes to a splitter or tap, it will split off and travel out to each new run of cable. Splitters and taps inevitably introduce loss, which slightly weakens the signal. If all of the cable runs are the same length, an even amount of signal will be sent to all of the antennas and they will all cover the same amount of area. If one length is shorter, however, it will still get the same amount of signal as the others, but has less cable loss. That means it will send out a stronger signal and cover more area. But it robs power from other antennas, weakening their output or coverage area. This is where a tap comes into play. A tap will apply a designated amount of signal loss to the shorter, stronger output port and let the signal pass through the other port with very little loss. So you can run a short leg off of one port and still have plenty of signal to send onto the other ports for longer runs. Splitters are best used in large centralized areas 
where they evenly distribute the signal to numerous other antennas for consistent coverage areas. Taps are best used in situations like long hallways. You can run the signal into a tap that splits into a nearby office and the rest of the signal continues down the hallway. You can daisy chain taps to repeat this process down the hall, as long as you have adequate signal. 